Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be going over the autopilot and ground collision avoidance system in the A10. Let's start with the autopilot first. So the autopilot is controlled with this panel down here right behind the throttle. Now before you mess with this, you need to make sure that this EAC switch is on here, and these four switches, yaw sass and pitch sass, are on. All these switches need to be flipped on or the autopilot won't work. Okay, so there are two controls for the autopilot. There's this button right here that turns it on and off, and there's this switch right here which controls which mode of the autopilot we want to use. You can also turn the autopilot on and off using this red button right here on the throttle called the left throttle button. This red button right here on the throttle and this black button down here do the exact same thing. Okay, so there are three autopilot modes here, path, altitude, heading, and altitude. So let's start with the middle one, altitude, heading. It's pretty self-explanatory. It will hold our current altitude and current heading. So in the A10, before you turn on the autopilot mode, you need to make sure your plane is leveled out. That's good enough. And then we can come here and click this button. And you should have just heard that beep noise. That means the autopilot's on. So you can see the plane is holding our current altitude at 11,600 feet. And it's holding our current heading too. You can also see on the heads up display down here, we have altitude heading. It will show us our current autopilot mode selected. Okay, let's go ahead and turn that off. To turn the autopilot off, you just click the button again. Now let's go to the next mode, altitude. This is the exact same thing, except it will not hold our heading, it will just hold the altitude. This can be really useful if you want to get in a bank and orbit around a target. For example, let's turn it off. Let's get into a left bank here and then turn it on. So as you can see, it will hold our current altitude but it will not hold the heading. We're gonna keep turning left like this, which is really useful if you wanna orbit around a target. So now let's do the last mode, which is path mode. And in path mode, our plane will continue flying where the velocity vector is at. Now the velocity vector is this circle here with the three lines coming out. So whenever we turn path mode on, wherever our velocity vector is pointing at, our plane will keep flying in that direction. So let's go ahead and turn the autopilot off. And let's say I were to put the velocity vector on these mountains and then turn it on, my plane would fly to those mountains. Now, this autopilot mode is really useful if you wanna hold a certain pitch angle. For example, let's say I wanna pitch five degrees up. I can do that and then I can come here to path mode and turn the autopilot on. And now my plane will hold a pitch angle of five degrees. The last thing to note about the autopilot is there is a way to force yourself out of autopilot by just moving the stick a lot, like this. Warning, autopilot. And when you do that, you'll hear that warning noise, which will tell you that the autopilot is disabled. Okay, so next we're gonna go over the ground collision avoidance system, or the GCAS. This system basically is designed to prevent you from hitting the ground. So before we start, you need to make sure your radar altimeter is on. It's this switch right here, just make sure it's flipped up. So the first feature of this system we have is the pull-up system. So whenever we get too close to the ground, there will be a warning on our heads-up display and on our two screens, and there will also be a voice warning that plays in our headphones that's telling us to pull up. So I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate that now. Pull up, pull up. As you can see, we had that, that X show up on our heads-up display, we had those warnings on the screens, and we had the voice warning. So the next feature of the GCAS is the altitude warning system. So we can set an altitude that we don't want to go below, and one that we don't want to go above, and if we exceed those limits, then it will play us a warning noise. You can set those warnings by coming here and clicking this button on the upfront controller that says altitude alert. And you can see we have AGL floor, MSL floor, and MSL ceiling. Now the difference between AGL and MSL is AGL will use our radar altimeter. Now our radar altimeter um, will be this reading right here next to the letter R. Now we're too high so it's not reading anything right now, but whenever we go a little bit more down, you can see our radar altitude, which is our altitude above the ground right below us. So that's the AGL warning and the MSL is um, using the barometric altimeter which is this thing right here. And you can see our barometric altitude is this right here. So let's go ahead and set all of these. First, let's go to the AGL floor. If you wanna change it, you type in the number. So I'll type 600 and then you click enter. So you can see it's 600 now. That means whenever this reading here for the radar goes less than 600, it will play a warning. And I'll demonstrate that right now. 
Altitude, altitude, pull up, pull up. So you should have been able to hear that altitude warning when we were below 600 feet. Okay, so now let's go ahead and demonstrate the MSL floor. So the MSL floor will use the barometric altitude here. So let's say I want it to be 8,000 feet. I'm gonna go ahead and type in 8,000 and then click enter. So whenever we go below 8,000 feet, it will play a warning. Altitude, altitude. So there's our warning right there. The last one I'll demonstrate is the ceiling. This is the max altitude. So let's just say 9,000 feet. And when I go up to 9,000 feet, it will play a warning. Ceiling. So the last feature for the GCAS is training mode. So training mode will set a fake floor that we can use for training. So what you need to do is come here to this switch that says IFFCC and put it to test. And this will open a settings menu for our heads up display. Then you're gonna use this switch here that says select and you're gonna go all the way down until the arrow is pointing on GCAS training and then you're gonna click enter. And then you can see this thing that says ground plane and you can use this data switch to put it at 2000 or 3000. Now basically the 2000 and 3000 means the altitude where the fake ground will be for training. So for example, if I put it at 3000, then the airplane will think the ground is at 3000 feet. So when you're done, you're gonna scroll down with the select button and you're gonna click enter on store. And then you're gonna put the IFFCC back to on. And once this nav goes away, you can see the GCAS sign. That means we're in training mode. So right now you can see I'm 4,000 feet above the ground. And if I start going down now, whenever I get close to 3,000 feet, it's gonna start giving me some warnings. Pull up, pull up. You can see at 500 feet above 3,000, it gave me the pull up warning. Because even though I'm well above the real ground, the airplane thinks that I'm uh, very close to the ground because I put the floor to 3,000 feet. If you want to turn the training mode off, you just come back to test, and then you go back to GCAS training, click enter. For ground plane, put it to off, and then click store, and then put this back to on. So the last thing to mention about the GCAS is that we can do a test of it if we want. All we gotta do is come back here to the IFFCC menu like we did before. And then you can see um, here, it says bit or built-in test. So you're gonna put the arrow down to bit and click enter. And then you can see GCAS bit. So we can click enter to run it and it will test all the warning effects. Pull up, pull up. Altitude, altitude. You can see testing complete, no failure. Um, you can just click exit and then go back to exit and then put this back to on. Thanks for checking out this video and I'll see you guys later.